Look at uh, things like uh, uh, the uh, super cool water amounts, and you can see that this is a control, and you can see much greater super cool water here in the outer rain band regions compared to the control simulation. Uh, cold pools are more vigorous than that, especially uh, in the higher uh, seeding amounts than that. Uh, if we look at surface winds, so we're going from 2,000 to 4,000, 8,000, and uh, up to, up to 8,000 uh, per cubic centimeter concentrations that are released by this aircraft. It's really heavily loaded down with this stuff. And these are with the different category winds and see the probability density function of the winds changing in response to the seeding. And we see, we do see, uh, first of all, everything is a, a reduction in intensity of the, of the storm. And uh, secondly, we can see a monotonic response that we didn't see in all these other simulations and that. Uh, going from uh, a, a um, appreciable decrease in the intensity of Category uh, 5 winds and, the, and similar but weaker response in Category 4, uh, no response in the, in the lighter wind uh, situations in that. If you look at higher CCM, and this is really putting out a huge pollution plume in that, uh, the, mon the, there's, the response is, turns around and it's actually opposite. So by 16,000 per cubic centimeter, uh, we're still seeing a weakening of the storm, but the weakening is much less than at 8,000 per cc. And <clears throat> what is happening in that case is that the, there's so much pollution that the droplets are so small that the rhyming rates uh, of uh, the ice particles is suppressed. And so you get this huge anvil that's being produced. And the anvil, uh, uh, and you don't get the, the, the strong rainfall below the base of the clouds and that. And you don't get the cold pools to the extent. But still, the storm is weakening, but it's more marginal. So compared to our earlier simulation, the results saw a monotonic response to increasing CCN up to a certain level. And then we go over the top. Uh, includes greater supercool water mounts, stronger updrafts, enhanced rainfall, wider area and colder cold pools. And this is all according to the hypothesis we had. Great, great, great. Above 8,000, something different's happening here as a result of the uh, development of, uh, of, of more of the uh, uh, water mass being transported into the anvils. And uh, you get a larger fraction of super cool water and ice being thrust up in the anvils. The precipitation efficiency is actually didn't decrease. The reduced rainfall occurs. And the cold pools are not as intense. And the hypothesis is that the cold pools are a main mechanism for uh, reducing the storm intensity. But it still occurs, even though the rainfall rates are occurring, but, not, but the signal is a lot less. Well, here's the other case. This is another uh, a student, Jeff Crowell, finished up his master's recently. Actually, this was funded uh, by a SEGAR program at CSU. And he did a case uh, in the Pacific that was actually part of, used data from a Tea Park field campaign. So this is an actual real case. Uh, here's the observed storm, for example, the track of the observed storm, and this is what it looked like. And uh, we took the uh, aerosol data and made estimates of the concentrations, and that we had lots of drop suns, so this made it a real nice case to simulate, so we had a lot more meteorology going into the model. Uh, and we set up the model uh, with the finest grid spacing being three kilometers as opposed to one and a half in the earlier simulations. So that's a bit of a compromise that I'm not terribly comfortable with, but uh, because one of the things is he, he actually did simulations at 10 kilometer grid spacing and you couldn't see any of the dynamic responses. So there's a point where you, you, know, you lose the capability of getting the dynamical responses that are hypothesized if you use two cores of resolution. And uh, these are the aerosol profiles that we inferred from the satellite data in that uh, and uh, the different concentrations in that. And here's just a case. This is a case off the Asian coast, and here's the storm. And this is a, a uh, pollution frontal boundary, and the storm s s uh, is sweeping the aerosol into the storm, wrapping it around right into the core of the storm, actually. So we've got this pollution aerosol boundary that's entering the storm system in that. Uh, the s simulation actually agreed with the wind speeds very well. Uh, the track is off a bit by about one and a half degrees, so it's pretty consistent, although I said this track. I've learned since then that a lot of the forecasting uh, people make an adjustment in their track in the early stages so they can get it in, in accordance with the observed tracks, and we didn't do that. We have to develop the, or, or, or the algorithm to do that. Uh, 
we find that, uh, particularly in some cases, this is super cool look at water amounts. Again, increased super cool water amounts, especially at 3,000. Note it's not a kind of consistent behavior. You we're talking, uh, again, we're relying on the dynamics of the storm to sweep these aerosol in the storm, so there's a lot of variability to that. Uh, cold pools, in general, were increased in area and intensity. So that's, again, consistent with, I say, the hypothesis. And this is the changes in the maximum wind speed relative to the low CCN background that we assumed. And actually, the storm intensified in the early stages of ingesting the, the aerosol pollution into the storm system, and then it weakened. And a, it's a appreciable uh, weakening. We're talking about uh, 20, 25 knots or so reduction in storm intensity. five knots or so reduction in storm intensity. And thereafter, you can see it kind of wobbles around with a general reduction with some blips here of increase. So it isn't all one of, you know, it's not all black and white that you, this stuff gets into the storm, the storm weakens. Uh, you can get some increasing intensity for a period, and it would make an operational use of, of seeding like this uh, quite a challenge, you know, because we still haven't got all the answers on just how you get, what kind of responses you get. So how do CCN alter the tropical cyclone intensity? Except for the very large amounts of CCN, the primary impacts of the aerosol on the tropical cyclone genesis intensity is by altering the strength of the cold pools. Uh, Alex has also pointed that out. But the large, for, for large amounts of CCN, we find large amounts of uh, water substances thrust in the aimpole. The rain is dim diminished, and so are the cold pool strengths. Yet the simulated storms still weaken, but not as much as when you have the vigorous cold pool response in that. We can only speculate really as to the causes, uh, either by change in vertical heating profile or a, strain, a strong divergence uh, that Alex was kind of pointing out and blocking the outflow from the central regions of the storm. So maybe that is happening in these real high CCN cases. But we really need to examine that uh, further and really to understand what's happening there. Unfortunately, we're out of money, <laughs> so we're out of business is what it really amounts to, which is, this has been a real fun project. I really enjoyed it. It's different. You know, I hadn't played around with this. So conclusion, <clears throat> the high amounts of CCN can be, lead to a weakening of the tropical cycle intensity. Uh, we've seen that in a number of cases, but not for all time periods and not for, uh, you know, it's not a guaranteed success all the time. If storms are seeded like the targeted seeding or uh, algorithm, uh, the response in the storms with varying, uh, but how do the response of other storms in an environment, say, with varying vertical wind shear? We've seen studies, Mike Montgomery and colleagues, where they looked at the effects of vertical wind shear on uh, storm intensity, and they find at higher wind shear, you get stronger entrainment, particularly in the outer rain bands, stronger cold pools, and almost mirrors what we're seeing with aerosol response. That's probably an overriding thing. I mean, it's probably the more dominant influence. Lower tropospheric moisture. If you've got a deep, moist layer in the storm environment, well, that's less conducive to producing strong cold pools. So we expect some sensitivity there. And also to variations in SST or you know, the stability in the storm in that. So how important is aerosol variability and tropical cyclone predictability relative to these other factors? This is something that still needs to be answered, and just from a forecasting point of view. So we're arguing that the aerosol influence is strong enough that uh, it should be uh, important in hurricane forecasting, but you know, then the argument is, well, that's just a little pimple on the butt of nature, as <laughs> some people would say. And, um, but on the other hand, I, the results here show that it, it could be quite significant and maybe ha have improved, including aerosol influences could increase the predictability of tropical cyclones. So that's my little story. Paper open for questions? Come on, George. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me or should I go to the mic? Just for fun, 
What if you, uh, you had artificial CCN and you started them in the outer rain bands? Would you have to have a source continue doing this? Or once you weaken the storm, what happens after that? Have you tried that kind of experiment? Do you have to keep feeding it? This, uh, yeah, the response seems to last for maybe 48 hours or so. But it from, diminishes. From, from how long is seeding? This is be, what did we, Gustavo and I, we put it in for, I can't remember how long, six or eight. Started like at 40 hours, right? And I went to, yeah. was it nine? Six or nine hours? Yeah, something like that. Six or nine hours, and you can still see the signal outward. And the storm is weakened, and you can keep running it, and it doesn't pick up again? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, I, I was uh, okay, boss of the Hurricane Research Division for six years. Yes, and, I remember. Uh, and uh, we <laughs> got almost weekly, you know, Mad Hatter type of proposals. So, how yeah. to, so, so, you know, we had standard forms we sent. That's right. From yeah. I, I get a lot of those, but, too. But, <laughs> I, but it is, you know, it's, if there's any possibility, yeah. maybe it's, yeah. we shouldn't be completely... Right. against it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But at this point, it's been, I, I think this, we're learning more about the tropical cyclone and its variability, so I think there's a lot, they're just probing the simulated storms and looking at the responses you get. It's, it's surprising to me.